It's morning becomes eclectic at 89.9 KCRW. I guess in studio this morning uh, broadcast. And as we uh, take a break in the set, we're talking with Tricia and James. First of all, thanks for coming in and doing the program. We've been wanting to do it for a long time, and finally we got you. Cool. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Uh, Tender Buttons is the, the new record, which I want to talk about a little bit. But uh, I guess, as to the best of my knowledge, you haven't been on the show before. Maybe we can, if you don't mind, sort of backtrack a little bit and, and come up to date to, to the new album and talk about the history of the band. Is it 10 years now that uh, Broadcast has been a, an official group? Uh, yeah, it is. Something like that, yeah. Mm, very close to. Born in Birmingham, my hometown, and we were having some fun with the accents before we started rolling the tape, which we, we might slip into at any given time. Uh, uh, t tell us a little bit about those early days, because I, th I think if you look back to 1995 and you look at what was going on uh, in the UK at the time, wasn't that when that whole Britpop thing was, was happening? Yes, that was happening. Uh, yeah. Yes, it was very much happening. Um, and and so 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 the music that was sort of being played around you at that time was very much that sort of lad. I, I, that's what they called it, right? Laddish yeah, that, kind of stuff. But that came with Loaded magazine as well, and it was there was quite a whole culture of that yeah, uh, pretty horrible, I think. Um, so so what did you you guys set out to do in the in the middle of all of that? Uh, we wanted to try and do that as well, but we got it wrong. <laughs> it just didn't work out. We wanted to use samples, I think, because we you know got a lot of kind of hip hop influence, um, at least from, from James and the boys. No. Um, and I was into a folky thing, so we were trying to cross those two things. That's rubbish. <laughs> 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 that is rubbish. Yeah, so, so h how do you do that? How do you, how do you, how do you cross those things? You, you, you're, you're kidding me now, aren't you? You're, you're having me no, on. The no, that's the, the true. The way we, we, were called, we had this sort of cheap computer called Amiga then, and, and, and we quite liked playing around with it, you know. And we were just interested in using cheap bits of technology that we, that we had rather than singing about being down the boozer. And, and the sampling has obviously been going on for for a little while. Is, is it something, I mean, what was it about that that really sort of caught your attention? Was it was it the ability to sort of cut and paste things and, and create new things out of existing it was, it wasn't stuff? Or? I think we were interested in it uh, because what, what how it affected songwriting, you know, and how songs could be constructed, which was quite different to... You know, just strumming along on a guitar, you'd end up with different things happening. And, and that, you could that just really kind of wholesale take a production value as well, and you would just enter into a, a, a fantasy almost immediately, I think, which is very good for um, instinctual kind of songwriting, I think. For me, it was. You know, a, a kind of easy listening loop, if you like, with nice strings and a good bass sound and. and it's very easy to kind of, uh, I don't know, automatically kind of sing to that environment, if you know what I mean. Well, it's it's a very different way of writing songs, as you as you suggested. You know, when James was talking about, you know, you strum a guitar or maybe you plonk out a couple of notes on on, on a piano and a melody and all this kind of thing. I mean, how how does this essentially um, change the songwriting form for you guys? Um. I guess for me, it I helped me to um, kind of project uh, emotions onto some, in a romantic way, in meaning like the kind of metaphysical way. So I could describe, you know, big strings and lush production. It, it's easy to s talk about natural things like mountains and birds. And so for me, it was a good way into um, escapism, I think. Um, I think when you strum a guitar, there's a certain there's too much reality that comes with that. Um, so for me, it was a way of fantasizing in songs, in a sense, but still kind of um, you know describing my emotions a form of self-expression. But blah, 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 blah. but I think our music being sample based was like the first single, and then you know, and then maybe a couple of tracks after, that and we soon sort of developed the sound of our uh, of the band, you know. I think the thing was we were trying to really cross the two things over the acoustic instruments and kind of samples or electronic sounds and we we all most com compartmentalized those on the on work and non work and I think over the years our our kind of focus has been to kind of gel the two things together, which is really hard to do i think um. 
you know, working through those early singles and then obviously getting to uh, to the point of, of making an album, um, the first album, The Noise Made by People. Uh, uh, let, let's quickly move through that and then talk about the next couple of albums and coming up to date with, with this one. I mean, ha how have things evolved, do you think, d during the course of, of these records? Uh, I think we've integrated those initial ideas more, you know, and they become a bit more seamless. And that's always been our kind of... Uh, you know, aim ever since we started the band was to kind of have this perfect integration of songwriting and, and, and all the, the, the colour and the sound that we love as well. And because I think when we started, it always seemed so separate, and it takes a it's quite a hard thing to get them working together very well. So, and I think we're getting there now. Yeah. The thing is, I think we've specialised a bit more. I think we try to do everything on the first few LPs. Um, I think Tender Buttons has really kind of focused in on a few ideas and a few m ways of working. Does that really just come about from practice and you know the process of understanding how how to uh, how to do it? I mean, I know the first album, for example, took you quite a long time. Has, mm -hmm. has, has that process moved along a little faster for you now as you've begun to understand how um, you can work? It's really hard to say because you're kind of always challenging the way that you write um, in order to, you know, move on and progress. Um, so it's a bit, it's hard to say, you know, that we, we do it quickly now. I don't think we do. I think, I think what what we our ambitions are, are difficult to achieve, and I'm not really bothered about how long it takes, really, as long as we get something good at the end of it. I am. <laughs> he is. <laughs> You got other things to do, James? Yeah, loads of stuff. <laughs> Three of the jobs I'm holding down. They sound like me. <laughs> well, listen, I, I'm I'm really glad you came in and, and performed these songs for us today. Um, congratulations on the new album. Obviously, uh, touring on it right now. What's uh, what's up next? Uh, L.A. Troubadour this evening, and then home. All right. Well, let's let's cut that part out because <laughs> we're not going to run that tonight. Let's, uh, if you could come up with telling us what you're going to do after this tour, is that all right? Uh, what are we doing? After, oh, uh, when we get home, we're probably going to uh, you know, start work on some more music, I think. That's the plan, maybe collaborate with a few people at home. Yeah. All right, well, thanks for, com thanks for coming in. We're going to throw it back to the second set. Our guests uh, in studio this morning uh, broadcast, and uh, despite the fact that they're Birmingham City supporters, we will play the second set. And uh, all right, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> Thank You're you. Welcome, mate.